So I have a list of products here in Google Sheets, roughly about 200 products, give or take. And I like to see which of these products are in stock. I'd also like to see the price of these different products, the shipping charge, the lead time, uh, and the title of the products. And I'd even like to see what the product looks like to get an image of the product. So to do this manually, of course, is going to take a lot of time. So what I'm going to do is use this tool I developed, the Skewgrid Data Fetcher, to fetch this data. And it does it using this program, which is Skewgrid. Now, um, I'll get back to that in a minute. But right now, I'd like to show you what the steps are to actually make this work. So first of all, I need to set and update the columns for the spreadsheet. So I need to tell it where everything is, in other words. So it's going to ask me which row number are your headings, and that's going to be row number one in this case. These are my headings up here, those titles up top. Which column letter contains your source URLs? Well, that's going to be the column uh, letter C has all my different product links in there. Those are the products that I'm uh, fetching. Which column will store the product titles? Well, that's column A in this case. And by the way, your arrangement can be different from this, right? This is just the arrangement I'm using in this example. Which column will store the images? Well, it's letter B. By the way, if you do not want to use a column, like let's say I didn't want to have images, you can just put a zero instead, okay? And that means you won't have any images at all. You don't have an image column, okay? But if you do have an image column, and it's B, then I'm going to put B. And then which column will contain the prices? Well, that's going to be column E. And which column will contain shipping? That's going to be column F. And which column will contain stock? That's D. I'm going to move this right along. Which will contain the lead time? That's going to be G. And which is going to tell, store the time the product data was updated? That's column H. So that will actually report when the product data was pulled. And now I'm going to see what I can do with this first product. And I don't, this might not actually be a product link, so that's possible as well. But I'm going to go ahead and click on get this product data and see what it's able to pull in this case. And um, see what happens. Just give it a moment. And that one might not actually be a valid product link. So I'm going to try this second one. Yeah, so, so this one is not even, that first one was not a proper link. Actually, I'm going to delete it. Um, you should always let it finish before you delete a row, however. Always let the script finish. So I'm going to delete that row. This item, second item, was removed. Now, you don't need to do these one by one, right? I'm just showing you that you can get product for one data, get data for one product. But you can also use crawl products data. Um, and that will actually move down the list. And as it moves down, it's pulling the data for each product. Now, um, you may notice that the images are very small, and that's because the, the rows aren't very tall. So the images are going to be very small. If you want things to be larger, I would suggest you can highlight um, this whole column and go to Format. Wrap in, select wrap. If you wrap it, you'll get taller rows. Okay, so now you'll be able to see the images more clearly um, of the products that are being fetched. All right, now um, I'm going to cancel that process because for a list that this uh, I mean the crawl is okay the crawl is gonna be ideal if you want to see things happen one by one but if you just care about getting the data um, and you have a large list of products it's better to use this bulk products data that third option now the bulk products I'll just take a look at that menu option again right now it says in groups of, of up to 50 at a time that number can change right now this is the number that I'm working with right now the trial version and it's really trying to find a good balance between doing enough products to where it's going to get the more of the list done um, but then not too many at a time either um, for some other reasons as well but but basically what it's doing right now is it's going to read it's reading the next 50 products so wherever, by the way, whatever row you are on when you select these options, that's where it's going to start. So what it's doing right now is it's counting the next 50 products, or I should say it's reading 
uh, the next 50. It's going to pull them in, do what it has to do, and then you'll see that eventually it will actually spit out the data for all 50 of the products at the same time. So that's a bulk approach. That is not for you to watch and wait. It's for the system to get things in bulk and populate in your sheet. Meanwhile, you can do something else. So um, I would like you to see when that data actually populates. So to keep it in real time, I am going to keep this here. Meanwhile, let me take a look at uh, SKU Grid really quickly and show you that to know which websites it's going to work with you. By the way, I have a link of SKU Grid the video. You're going to have to go to SKU Grid and go to suppliers to see what suppliers they work with. And um, those are the suppliers that this tool will work with because this tool is completely dependent dependent on SKU Grid. Do understand that. This tool, SKU Grid Data Fetcher, I'm depending completely on SKU Grid to get the proc data. I'm not scraping these with this uh, tool. They are scraping it. I'm just getting the data and bringing it back. That's all I'm doing. All right. So um, you can search here to see if your stores here. Or you can look at the list. I know I had a list up just a while ago. Oh, here they are. Yeah. Here's a long. OK, this is just that's just A, B, C. There, there are many, 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 many sites. These are just the most popular ones. Okay, they work with about either hundreds or thousands and in, internationally. OK, um, as well, internationally as well, not just in the US. These are suppliers uh, internationally. All right. Now, um, what else did I want to say about this? If your dropshipping SKU grid actually monitors your products, by the way, updates them onto your eBay account, your Amazon account, or whatever marketplace you're selling on, um, you can see uh, these are the different supported marketplaces, Shopify stores, Etsy, all these different um, marketplaces. So if you're selling um, on multiple marketplaces, if you're an e-commerce seller, this is going to be great um, or potentially useful to you if you want to track uh, your progress not using i'm not talking about my tool right now i'm talking about actually signing up on skew grid which i have a link in the description of this video if you want to do that where you can actually update your products but this tool uh, i made is linking um to skew grid and using it to pull the product data into google sheets all right so this does take a while i mean i, I did want you to see the moment that it actually comes in and uh, it can vary. Sometimes uh, I've, it doesn't take quite as long as it's taken right now. So right now it is taking kind of long. Okay, there it goes. But for that time, keep in mind that we waited. That was 50 products. It did 50. So you can see, okay, product data has been brought in. Now, a lot of these products are out of stock because this is an old product list that I have from a source and software from like three years ago. So um, a lot of these out of stock and what it does is once it does these 50 products it moves down here and now it's going to do the next 50 in the same manner all right now um i'm going to uh look at some different things in other videos that we can do with a template and some different google sheets things that i think will be useful um so for this year i want to go into not just saying hey here's the system and use it but hey what are some things that we can do on the google sheet that you can do yourself um to make your Google Sheet um, more friendly for yourself. Things like conditional format and uh, things like that uh, that you can do. I'll just do a quick example where, you know, if this is equal to one, right, that it's gonna show up green, right, or something like that, okay? Um, so that way we know the ones that are in stock are green. Things like that, okay? There are different things that, that you can do in Google Sheets to make it a little better. Uh, for yourself as a user so now if you want to as of to as of today's date the date of this video February 20th 2023 this is still in trial mode so you have to request contact me request that you want to try it and then you tell me what user ID you want to use and then I'll set you up it's a simple process I'll give you the instructions for installation instructions and then you just install it and start using it and um and that is as of the, as of today's date if you're watching in the future i might be past the trial point okay the trial version is about trying multiple users because i created this for myself originally and it worked great and now i'm trying the i created then developed it into a multi-user version where multiple users can benefit 
from my same uh, API account or accounts. As I have more users, I will have to increase accounts. Okay, uh, the number of API accounts. So basically, um, that is the deal. Just contact if you, me if you want more info. It's hard for me to say everything right here in the video that has to be said. And um, I look forward to either hearing from you directly or seeing you around right here on the channel in the comments.